The House voting earlier today to expel Republican Congressman George Santos. He is the first expelled member of Congress in history to not have a conviction. List of people who voted to expel Santos included a lot of the usual suspects like Congressman Don Bacon, Ken Buck, Mike Lawler, and Nicole Maliotakis. But there were also more than a few surprise votes, including Representative James Comer and Congressman Jeff Van Drew. Santos did get some support from Democrats, Congressman Robert C. Scott of Virginia and Congresswoman Nakima Williams of Georgia. Eight representatives didn't vote at all, including former Speaker Kevin McCarthy, Congressman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Congressman Dean Phillips, who is challenging Joe Biden for the Democrat nomination for president. Uh, getting a lot of reaction to all of this, folks. Sean writing to me, 105 GOP congressmen voted to expel George Santos in solidarity with the Marxists based on allegations only and where Santos said he won't run for re-election. Are they getting Marxists of America merit badges? What George Santos did has only been charged and has in no way affected the national business of the Congress, even if proven later. The rhino GOP cowards that voted to expel Santos just reduced their razor thin and an unreliable conservative vote by one and disenfranchised the GOP voters who elected Santos. Who the hell do they think they are and what are these clowns doing? And joining me now to share why he voted to oust George Santos today, California Congressman Kevin Kiley. Congressman, thanks for being here. Now, you voted to expel Santos today. Back in June, though, you voted to, to block a censure. This is, the, this is the censure that would have actually had consequences for Adam Schiff, not just a censure vote, but actually would have made him criminally accountable for some things that he had done for his Russiagate lies, which arguably caused far more damage to the country than anything George Santos uh, did. Can you explain the vote today? Well, the vote to, uh, to censure Schiff, I voted to censure Adam Schiff. I don't know what you're talking about with criminal stuff. That's not something that, that Congress can do. That was never on the table. All right, Congressman, just so we're clear, it's, I don't want to confuse, yeah, I, I don't want to confuse the audience. There were two, there were two votes on Schiff. The first one was for a financial penalty on Schiff. That, that you voted no. You didn't want to, uh, to to make Mr. Schiff accountable through a financial means, but you did vote to censure him on the second vote, which had no tangible consequences for Mr. Schiff whatsoever. Uh, no, incorrect. So I voted to censure Adam Schiff. He caused such grave damage to this country. I would encourage you to go back and watch the hearing with John Durham, in which I took Schiff to task in that hearing for all of the lies that he told and how he promoted uh, this hoax that caused enormous damage uh, to our country. Uh, and uh, you can go back and watch the coverage of that. There was a constitutional issue in one of the prior versions uh, of that uh, earlier resolution, uh, which myself and some very staunch conservatives like Thomas Massey uh, worked with uh, the author, Anna Polina Luna, uh, to, uh, to fix. And uh, so we did fix it. And then we got a, a censure vote passed. Uh, in the House, the alternative, if you pass something that's unconstitutional, what does he do, Chris? He goes and gets it thrown out in court and then claims vindication. Oh, look, I did nothing wrong. Uh, so uh, that was uh, absolutely the right thing to do uh, to hold him accountable. Now, as far as Santos, I mean, yeah. this is someone who, who has, uh, you know, been, uh, has, there's a lengthy ethics report that's come out uh, relating to the crimes that he committed. Uh, his treasurer has pled guilty uh, and, and implicated him. Uh, honestly, the guy should have resigned months ago. I think he's an embarrassment to the institution. Uh, and now that that seat is vacant, by the way, Republicans actually have a chance to keep it. You have the uh, major elections rating agency, the Cook Political Report, just move that seat uh, up two notches in terms of the chances that Republicans will be able to keep it uh, now that this has happened. So, uh, you know, it's time to move on, by the way. We've been doing a lot of censoring, a lot of a lot of these sort of resolutions that uh, honestly are not addressing the things that are top of mind for Americans right now, which is we need to fix what's going on at the border. Uh, we need to get our economy right. back on track. We need to deal with crime that's going on uh, in this country. And uh, that's what I'm focused on. And I know it's what you're focused on as well, because I see the coverage you do of these issues right. and you bring attention to them. Absolutely. And you know what? And, and, and to be fair, you said that Santos should have resigned a long time ago because he's, he's a bad dude. He's accused of, of bad activities, but he's not been convicted. However, Jamal Bowman, Jamal Bowman is a Democrat. He's admitted to his crimes. As you know, he pulled down a fire alarm, disrupting 
the official proceedings of Congress, yet the Republicans don't seem interested in ousting him. Are you saying that when comparing Jamal Bowman and George Santos, that Mr. Bowman is actually a superior member that doesn't deserve the Republicans' attention to be ousted? I, I don't know if anyone is a, is, he's a superior member to anyone. I mean, uh, he's a terrible member. Uh, he's voted, uh, you know, against uh, standing with, with Israel. And obviously, uh, what he did with a fire alarm was uh, insane and, and criminal. So there will be consequences for him, too. I'm not aware of any resolution. I think there maybe there has been one proposed, but it hasn't come before us for a vote just yet. Right. And I think that's what a lot of Republican voters are seeing, that Republicans will move heaven and earth to take out one of their own. But uh, when it comes to a Democrat, they're not going to be doing that. Uh, and, and that's what the voters see. And frankly, uh, Congressman, uh, it's, it, it's hard to explain from this conservative's point of view. I also wanted to address with you Congressman Loudermilk revealing that depositions, videotape depositions are... Go ahead, Sorry, sir. If I just add one point. Like, I think that, you know, as conservatives, we should be consistent, right? And so, uh, you know, I, um, I, I think that actually this is helpful in a political sense and that we're going to now be able to potentially uh, keep this seat in the House, which is going to be really important because the battle for the House is going to be very narrow next year. So if you're looking at this from strictly a political point of view, uh, then it's probably a net plus for Republicans. But I don't think that's well. the way you should look at the question. So when you look at whether it's Schiff, whether it's Santos, whether it's Bowman, I think that we should always look to uphold the Constitution. Look, I'm a constitutional conservative, and so, uh, you know, that might lead me to uh, sometimes have to make decisions that I might not like the outcome of. Uh, but in the long run, I think that our country is better off if we have principles and if we stand by the Constitution. So definitely, if well, someone yeah, with Bowman you know I, up, I, I, I think, Congressman, Congress. yeah, Congressman, it's not just you who's going to have to go and explain why a guy who admitted to his crimes is okay and no efforts to expel him from Congress, but George Santos, who's only accused, he's got to go. It's not up to me to explain it. It's going to be up to, to you folks to explain it to your constituents. Last thing I have, there's also a, a problem. Congressman Loudermilk is, is notifying folks that the January 6th depositions, they're missing. As you and I both know, it is illegal to destroy documents that, are, that pertain to an official proceeding uh, undertaken by the Congress, but they're just simply gone. The January 6 members, nobody's talking about investigating them. Nobody's talking about prosecuting them. Nobody's talking about demanding they produce those documents, which would shed light on what actually happened on January 6th. Don't you think that's a problem for the Republican majority? Uh, I hadn't heard about that. Obviously, that'd be troubling, and uh, you know, uh, we'll see what comes of it. Uh, looks like uh, Representative Loudermilk uh, is is on top of it, and so uh, I look forward to learning more. All right, very well, Congressman. Thank you very much, uh, C C Congressman Kevin Kiley, for your time today. We appreciate it.